Salem Witch Trials. Why are these people acting crazier than a group of 12-year-old girls waiting in line to buy Justin Bieber tickets? Well, these lunatics are the fine, upstanding citizens of Salem, Massachusetts in the late 1600s. And a hanging was only one way to spend a Saturday afternoon. There was also crushing people with stones, tying people to wheels, shaving all of their body hair to look for witch marks, uh, basically birthmarks or moles, and making cakes out of human urine and feeding them to dogs. And that wasn't even the weirdest stuff. What made these people act this way? One word. Witch, witch mania. mania. All of this weird stuff is just a sampling of the methods they use to find witches. Uh, we're talking pre-Facebook, of course. Basically, the entire thing started when two little girls began having epileptic fits, which doctors at the time thought had to be witchcraft. Two other girls and a slave named Tituba were arrested for placing the spell. At trial, they started accusing other town folk of being witches. The entire thing got a little out of hand. Anyone who confessed to being a witch was able to repent, but was shunned by their neighbors afterward. They weren't burned at the stake, which was more of a European thing to do. But those who refused to confess were tortured to death and denied a proper burial. It was kind of a lose-lose situation, especially because some of the tortures included things like throwing people who couldn't swim into a body of water. If they floated, they were a witch and would be executed. If they sank, they were innocent, but probably dead. Many people, both men and women, were convicted on spectral evidence, which means that someone simply had to say that they saw the person do something strange, like turn into a horse. After dozens of people were convicted and tortured, the trials were denounced by guys like Increase Mather, who, believe it or not, did not have the weirdest name in Salem. Eventually, the Massachusetts courts put a halt to the whole thing, and everyone went back to farming and hating Indians. But how did an entire town go so crazy that they prodded, dunked, and hanged everyone from the elderly to little girls? Were drugs involved? Some historians think it might have been the result of ergot poisoning. Ergot is a fungus that grows on rye bread, and it acts like LSD in the body. Whatever the cause, at least we've learned from it and know that it could never happen again. So what do you think caused it? Could it happen again in this country? Or should we ask when? Shmup among yourselves. We'll wait.